Seeing that Epigenes, one of his companions, was in poor physical condition for a young man, he said, You're out of training, Epigenes. I don't do physical training, Socrates, he replied. But you ought to, just as much as a prospective competitor at the Olympic Games. Or do you think that the mortal struggle against her enemies in which Athens will sooner or later involve you doesn't matter? And yet, in the hazards of war, it's not uncommon for people to lose their lives through lack of fitness, or to save it only ignominiously. For the same reason, many are captured alive, and once captured either spend the rest of their lives perhaps in the bitterest servitude, or, after being subjected to the most cruel duress and paying in some cases a ransom greater than the sum of their possessions, live out their lives in want and misery. Many too win a bad reputation because their physical debility makes them seem to shirk danger. Perhaps you don't take these penalties of unfitness seriously, and assume that you can easily put up with that sort of thing. In my view at any rate, the prospects that await a man who cares about his physical fitness are much easier and more pleasant. Or perhaps you think that unfitness is both healthier and in general more good for you than fitness, or are scornful of the results that fitness brings? In point of fact, the consequences of keeping oneself fit are entirely contrary to those of failing to do so. In the first place, those who keep themselves fit are healthy and strong, and this means that many of them come through the conflicts of war with honour and escape from all its dangers. Many help their friends and do service to their country, and so earn gratitude and win glory and achieve the most splendid honours, and consequently live out their lives with greater pleasure and distinction, and leave behind them a better start in life for their children. The fact that our country does not conduct military training at public expense is no reason for individuals to neglect it. They should regard it no less seriously. You can take it from me that there is no other feat of endurance either. In fact, there is no other activity of any kind in which you will be at a disadvantage for having your body prepared. The body is valuable for all human activities, and in all its uses it is very important that it should be as fit as possible. Even in the act of thinking, which is supposed to require the least assistance from the body, Everyone knows that serious mistakes often happen through bad health. Many people's minds are often so invaded by forgetfulness, despondency, irritability and insanity because of their poor health that their knowledge is actually driven out of them. On the other hand, those who are in good physical condition have ample cause for confidence and run no risk of any such misfortune through debility. Their physical fitness is likely to contribute towards results that are contrary to those of unfitness. Results that a sane man would endure any hardships to secure. Besides, it is a shame to let yourself grow old through neglect before seeing how you can develop the maximum of beauty and strength of body, and you can't have this experience if you are negligent, because such things don't normally happen by themselves. Ay, 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 ay.